Father in heaven, we commit our time here this morning. Thank you for your love, for your kindness. Thank you for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and dying for us, sacrifice for sin. Thank you for the goodness, your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord, for being with us, and we worship you this morning because you have done so much for us. From eternity past to eternity future, we are thine because we have accepted you. I pray your blessing upon your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> now, thank you for praying for me too for safety. I almost hit a deer this morning. <laughs> it's about five miles up the road. You know, it's just no, no deer, nothing, you know. Uh, I just started to speed up a little more. It wasn't quite up there. I think I was only going about 80. Uh, when this one deer went that way, and the small one <laughs> decided the car was too close, and he turned around. That's when he slipped and fell, and my tire was, well, I don't know how far he was from me. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, it's, it's good. We travel a lot of miles, and sometimes we come in close to, to danger. I appreciate prayer. Uh, today, I'd like us to consider one verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. <clears throat> I'll just read the verse to you. Uh, that's the verse I'm going to be uh, say dwell on or speak on or have reference to it and uh, I think it's not just once in a while but to realize that we are in a fight a battle if not on our side there's certainly resistance from evil resistance from Satan resistance from the powers of darkness. I'll read verse 12. For we, uh, there's quite a bit before that you could read, but I have to save my time here every time. Uh, I tend to go long. So i just going to start there on verse 11. Excuse me. Yeah, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take the armor of God. Uh, it's good for us to realize that that God is on our side after we accept him as, sa as our savior uh, he becomes uh, I would say part of us or we become part of him well, I guess part of us because he is dwelling in our lives and one of the things I believe we see uh, God wants us to see is constantly we're reminded uh, that there is power on the other side. And <clears throat> I, it's not only that we should realize, but I think we will do better in a Christian life when we realize where that's coming from, where resistance is coming from. I remember Dr. DeHaan speaking on radio Bible class years ago. He said uh, about this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that we want to live for Jesus Christ, we will constantly, uh, not acknowledge, what's the word there? Uh, no, experience resistance from evil, from Satan. And I believe 
It's right for us to know that. If we don't, we may blame a lot on people, blame uh, the government, blame whoever comes into view (laughs) in your mind. If we don't realize that the resistance that we face of the enemy of our souls, we need to realize that it's going to be most of our lifetime as Christians. But God doesn't say, you know, God doesn't withhold Satan or we are free and never face any battles. I believe we all do, one time or another, sometimes greater, sometimes not as much. But where that comes from is what I'd just like to refresh your mind on it. Fighting not with flesh and blood. Never a time when there's not a resisting between Satan and the believer. Now, let's go a little bit into time past. It wasn't until I got to Bible school that I got to, uh, excuse me, it wasn't until the time I was teaching Bible school, not when I went to Bible school learning, but I had to study before I teach. It's a good practice. I, I think I know my subject, but still, I have to prepare. Especially young people. Boy, they're pretty sharp, you know. <laughs> you miss a point here. Uh, I, I think of, uh, it happened to me too, even of ki- kids, you know. They are forever praising him. And it tells us what they say. Some of it anyway. And I thought I knew all about angels, but I found after reading the book I didn't know all that. Well, I didn't know everything. It's kind of interesting. There's, uh, it, it's pretty hard to go, uh, you know, there's only so many verses that teach about them, and it's not in, in a way that can be misinterpreted. At least it seems hard to Im- misinterpret about angels, existence, their, their sphere of ex- existence, and also their uh, service for God. I might just mention a little more about angels, that there are different kinds of angels. There's only one group of angels that are mentioned, so was it seraphim, that have wings, there's other angels are mentioned that are uh, could fly, doesn't say they have wings. There's only one part, one verse in scripture that seems to infer of female angels. That's in Zechariah 5, I think it is, first two, three verses. Uh, I remember mentioning that one time and and uh, somebody not you but somebody said where does it say that <laughs> uh, i i don't know there's the some bible teachers say no that's not that's not uh, what it is but the the scripture doesn't change and uh anyway so much for that in job 38:4 they are spoken about as stars. I'd like us to turn that, to that. Uh, we'll, re- we'll come back to this here in verse 12 of Ephesians 6. But uh, Job, chapter, there Job comes before Psalms. <coughs> Thirty-eight and. Verse 4, I'm just establishing a point here that why we should be aware 
that there are beings beyond us. 38.4 Where were you? Where was thou? When I laid the foundations of the earth, God to Job, where were you? Declare it if you have understanding. Well, this was millenniums back, millions of years back. We don't know how long ago. Where, uh, verse 6, whereupon are the foundations of the earth? The foundations are fashioned. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? I think I skipped one verse here. But we'll go on to verse 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now he's talking about before Job's time, uh, the time of creation, uh, the earth being created, but already in existence were these beings that he called stars, morning stars. Most Bible teachers agree, since it was uh, man was not yet created, that these who sang, sang together, and the sons of God shouted for joy. And so, uh, Job 38, 7, you might remember that as well, that uh, in the Old Testament, uh, sons of God are usually, if I believe there's other reference, at least one, where that is used, morning stars and sons of God. Anyway, we get to this place where there's a host of angelic beings. Uh, in Revelation, it uses different language like 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Now, I don't know what the number comes out as. But in any case, can you imagine how many angels there may have been that were created, all created? Now, uh, something else happened in eternity past. It seems like it was before creation of man that there was a rebellion and that there was one of these higher beings. Uh, I don't like the term myself to say higher being as God. While it is true, in some sense of the word, it is true, higher being, but it almost seems like, okay, here is beings. This one is here. There's one a little bit higher, and there's a higher being, which, which position kind of compares with the others that is... I'll use the word a bit higher. God. But that's not so. He's beyond that. I don't think the term quite fits him to say higher being. Well, it is true. But he's beyond all beings. The better term would be highest being if you want that. But he's beyond all beings created being including man so on now in that when the angels were created again I not aware of verses that would tell us that they had been given also free choice in the way you and I have been given free choice now, I, for one, uh, maybe after, you don't want to shout it out right now, but uh, if you know a different uh, 
may be verses on that and I'm not aware of, I'd like to know. In any case, they chose, they chose a position that I don't believe God made them to do so. For instance, Lucifer, who began the rebellion that it seems that he was in that position to decide what he's going to do and practiced his freedom in choosing to be like God. Uh, I like the way it's worded. I don't think in all his power, Satan I'm talking about, being one of the highest archangels beyond that, that I would think that he would know he could not beat God, just simple term, to beat God. He knew God. I knew God close enough that uh, Bible teachers believe he was one of the covering cherubs. Uh, I can't prove it from scripture. I've also heard, learned, read that there was three covering cherubs and later in the scripture that only two are mentioned. Satan lost his position. And we sometimes hear that he was kicked out of heaven shortly after. He may have been kicked out, but listen to this. He has access to God today, yet. He is there constantly accusing the brethren. Not just gospel hall brethren, but the Christians. He's accusing them. And, uh, well, I guess he can accuse them from a distance, but it seems like that when he came and God talked with him, where were you? Where did you go? He told him I've been on my trap line, going up and down the earth, and to and fro, and he is after Christians. And the New Testament warns us, be sober. Be vigilant. Your adversary, the, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. I do believe there is a time, though, that he will lose his position to, to the throne of God. He will be given another place. John MacArthur says one of the th climate changes people should look at is where they're going to go. One place is hot. The other isn't. Yeah, there's a big climate change there, all right? Yeah. Anyway, we go, go back to this part here about Satan losing his position because he rebelled against God. And if you read Isaiah, I think it's 14. He said, I will be like the Most High. I will... Lift my throne, not the exact words here, above the stars of God, above God, above the throne. I wouldn't quote any more of that. Uh, in Isaiah, it seems like the, the part that he can see was desire, lust for, to be like God. Now, isn't it kind of interesting to you that Jesus Christ being God wants us to be like him? That we are in Christ and we grow in the Lord and will forever be with the Lord. But the per verse that says at the rapture, the scripture tells us we shall be changed, and we shall be made like unto him. And that's the desire of God now, Romans 11. I beseech you, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And I think in that part there is an exhortation to be like Jesus Christ, to be as he is. And in reality, the reason we will not sin in heaven is because we'll be made like unto Jesus Christ. Uh, otherwise, I think a perfect man, even perfect man, uh, sinned. And I've heard people, well, just look out, you know. Uh, but it says we'll be made like unto Jesus Christ. He, has no, he doesn't sin. And that will be made complete by him. But right now, we, we are in a rebellion by a host or lots of opposition. Uh, when, when Satan rebelled, it seems like that they, uh, I couldn't for sure say from Revelation uh, is it 12, 13, that uh, this dragon drew a third of the stars. It's usually taken that a third of the angels were follower, became followers of Satan. Now, whether that proves that or not, I, I can't say. I guess I need more teaching along that line, but uh, we do know there's a, there's legions of demons that are against God, against us as Christians, and will oppose us as believers. I think it's a, it's a good thing to learn that ahead of time. We can stand the, the, uh, the darts, the arrows of Satan fired against us better if we know that there is an enemy that, that hates us. And so, I, uh, when, I, when I talk about that uh, created beings having a choice and they practice that choice in choosing against God, I do not know why they would. It seems that they were at least in the presence of God. Whether they saw God or not, I do not know. We just take it for granted they're there, they saw God. And uh, there's, there's scripture about what, what is it, the fallen angels or the uh, unfallen angels. When it talks about scripture, the Lord Jesus Christ coming to earth as a man and dying for people, saving them from their sin, and it ends with this. Which thing the angels desire to look into? Is it the fallen angels or the good angels? Well, I. it doesn't say that they do look into it. Desire to look into it. Is there salvation for angels? At least not the first part. We don't see that. That Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. Came down for the purpose of dying for mankind. Which thing? The whole plan of salvation. Angels desire to look into. I can, I can kind of picture that in a way that here is a host of beings that are lost. I, I can't prove it again that, uh, that they wouldn't at least have that desire of if there's a way back to God, I'd like to know it. For human beings, yes, there is a way back to God. 
the angels, it doesn't specify that specific that there's a way back. In fact, there's nothing to indicate that would support it. It would be, I suppose, you know, another kind of beings got saved and we didn't. There was no plan of salvation for us. We might want to say, well, boy, I wish there was for us too. It's open for mankind. That's the wonderful thing about it. This fellow, I didn't know him. I see him sitting here. Uh, and uh, right now he's just kind of feeling about, it wasn't a long time in jail, but uh, uh, he was, I, I was talking to him as soon as I got here. I thought I knew the guy, but <laughs> I thought he was from here. But then I, and uh, talking to him, he uh, he said he's trying to get home, and he had been in jail for a time. You know, they able to tell a person like that, and he said, you know, the first he didn't, he didn't know me; I didn't know him. Uh, I did wrong. He said, I, I forget the other words that he used, but he wasn't feeling good about spending time in jail. He wished he didn't, but he, he said, I did. And so it just kind of opened up the way for me to talk to him that there is a way, that there is a way. And I'm glad he came listen to the songs could speak to people that's why I'm saying to you people pray for him and uh, you know he could come to the Lord I probably will talk to him I did give him some literature and uh, if I see him I'll probably talk to him again uh, but when we we shouldn't take it for granted here that you know that Salvation is available just like that. But to get to that salvation being available for mankind, you look back at the price that was paid for man. That's a big price. And when I think of it, when I personally think of it, that Jesus had a chance to turn around to not go through with it. In fact, there was seemingly a time there when he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. The way my understanding and part of his prayer was, God, if you're willing to remove this cup from me, but if not, I'm willing to go. And God let him go through. He didn't turn around. Now, I don't know how things would go. Certainly not good if Jesus did not go after all. So, the very fact that he died for, I think from inference from Scripture, dying for lesser beings... He didn't become an angel, but he stepped down lower to mankind's plateau or position. Came to our level. And so when we talk to people about salvation, let's consider it, people, that he paid a big price for it. <clears throat> Back to Ephesians 10 or 6. There's some, some thoughts there I'd like to bring before I close. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. When we know, get to know this maybe more, I think we have a better place to be able to 
resist. Sometimes people give up too soon and say, well, that's the way things go, that's the way it'll be. I don't think so. I believe there's a place for us to be in position to be in partnership. We are in partnership with God. That's why he's not just alone deciding when the Lord Jesus will come. But believe it or not, you and I are encouraged by God to pray for the return of Jesus Christ. Even people, uh, I, I remember preaching at uh, Wake in Good Fish. They, got, they always have this big uh, poster, not poster, uh, the Lord's Prayer on the wall there at the hall. So uh, I, I was asked to speak. So I said, I'm going to speak on what you're reading up there on the wall. And you didn't know what you were praying for. So I pointed to that. Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come. I say it to you and I say it to them. I said it to them already. I said, do you know what that means? When you, when you repeat the Lord's Prayer, do you know what you're talking about? Do you know what you're praying for? You know you're actually praying for the Lord Jesus to return. There's no kingdom without a king. In the, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, there is a king that's going to come and fulfill that position. So, even well, I mean, most a lot of churches, liberal churches, still repeat Lord's Prayer. Well, that prayer is going to be answered one day. Well, we do see the last part of Revelation where it says, Even so, come Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit prays, encourage us to pray, teaches us to pray that the Lord Jesus will return. God will make that to happen, to take place, that Jesus will return in answer to our prayers. One more thought. <clears throat> Sometimes we pray and Forget about it. Because it didn't happen the next day or that afternoon, the morning that you prayed about it. I've had people tell me, all oh, different ones I've met in years, ministering to people. You get all kinds of reaction. And this one guy, well, not only one, but different ones. Said, I pray, but nothing happens, so... I don't know what to do. I just kind of forget about it. You know, there's, a, there's scripture in the book of Daniel. <clears throat> I'll just give you the reference. Chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. This is what happened. Daniel prayed. Now, there's a lot of big things that happened in his time, okay? But this happened to be something about prophecy, and it seems like prophecy that's beyond yet 2020. In the, in the future, I believe it had to do with Israel's struggles during the tribulation and all that. Anyway, Daniel was given a vision. He was troubled by it and he prayed, God help me to understand this. He kept on praying. Nothing happened. Okay. So, I guess if we don't know that, these things, we can get discouraged. Say, I prayed. Ever hear? No doubt you've heard people say that. I prayed, but nothing happened. All right. The Bible tells us that he kept on praying. He kept on praying and fasted. He sought the Lord in it. Then one day, an angel 
unfallen angels that do God's service appeared to him. And he says, Daniel, don't be afraid. This is the words in those in the verses that I gave you, Daniel 10, 12, and 13. He said to him, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day of your petition, your words were heard. In other words, you can say, August 9, you remember you prayed, you start praying August 9, but nothing happened. Take comfort in the fact that God heard you the first time you opened your mouth to him. He heard you. You know what, Daniel? I was sent for that answer to your prayer. But he said, for three weeks, I'll put it this way. One of the fallen angels resisted me. I couldn't come through for the answer to prayer. You read that in Daniel 10, 12, 13. An angel, a demon, resisted him. Resisted the answer to prayer. And his prayer wasn't answered until three weeks later. Long time people, you know, after they, they forget about their prayer. If an answer, oh yeah, I did pray some time ago. Well, God is merciful. Uh, but we need to be, you know, continuing instant in prayer and not to give up. And Jesus said not to faint. That's the word he used. Don't stop. Because you remember now there's a host of demons against us and against God and are fighting against God and have the power to resist even answers to prayer that are being brought to us. Okay? I, I will stop there. I just want to ask for your prayers. There's prayers for us individually. There's prayers for family and, you know, extended families. That's the way I'm praying right now. God save all my uh, children. Up to great-grandchildren right now. Not great, 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 not yet. But I'm praying for all of them. And uh, then there's that, they use big words like corporate prayer. It seems like a corporation here bending their knees together or praying. No, it's all together prayer. Huh? Praying about something. These prayer requests, hey, don't take them lightly. Pray. Pray together. And in doing so, God answers prayer. And remember this. It might take three weeks, three months, three years, 30 years. I heard, uh, I know of my uh, I was going to say uncle, but it's a woman, my mother's sister, my auntie, okay. Uh, prayed for, well, she became a Christian. We, earlier in our ministry, she came to the Lord and lived for the Lord during the time that she lived on in Goodfish Lake. And she told me that she's praying for all her children. Well, one of them that has gone on one of the guys, he came to the Lord. But then this one guy, I mean, he, he's been in jail. He's been uh, fighting. He lost one eye because of fighting. Beer bottles, you know, this kind of stuff. You fight with anything. And this was about 20 years, over 20 years after my auntie died. Then one day this guy came to the Lord. My auntie's prayers were answered 20, over 20 years after she died. Happens. Okay? Let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for the day you have given us. Thank you for the Lord Jesus who brought salvation. Thank you that we 
accepted him. Many of us here, I don't know all the people here, but I believe most here have already settled, settled it with Jesus in salvation. I pray your blessing upon your word. Continue with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.